So we're moving on with this new autopilot and I've been thinking about how to progress with the next phase which is the main autopilot panel. Uh, now you may think that starting from a blank sheet of paper is going to give you the best outcome and of course you know you have complete creative freedom but you can also you know get sort of seized with a kind of a paralysis not knowing how to proceed or end up with something quite unimaginative and dull and one thing I'd really recommend is just taking a trip out to have a wander around your local hardware store or in this case stationery store. We've got a Ryman stationery store fairly local to where I work and so I've been looking around and I came across these things this was my first in fact I was looking for ways to do the lettering and and then I started to stumble across little plastic boxes. These are, you might have seen these, these are called <laughs> really useful boxes if you google that and they come in all sorts of sizes from tiny to huge, you know, much bigger than these but these are about the right size for what, well in fact exactly the right size for what I wanted these are pretty much identical in size to the existing autopilot panels, so 10 centimeters tall uh, sorry, 10 centimetres wide, 15 tall, and they open up. Now these are made of polypropylene, polypropylene, I don't know how you say that, which, which is much easier to drill than acrylic, but it's not as, it's more flexible, it's not as stiff. Um, actually this is, I did wor worry that this was going to be too flexible, but just playing with it here, I think that's fine at this size. Now in terms of the look, you'd have to kind of paint the insides of those bezels and then of course we'd have an insert for the graphics. And I think that's going to give a pretty nice industrial look to it. And of course it's a, it's a, a box so the, the instrument components can be self-contained. Now that said, I'm moving away from that as <laughs> the solution because I stumbled across something even better. And here it is, this is just a perfect example of you know, something I would not have predicted but something that's going to be pretty much perfect for the job. This is actually a set of acrylic sort of desktop drawers to put in little knickknacks and you know take one of these and you get five of these uh, in fact if I give you the brand name this is brand name is OSCO o -S -C -O. and if you, if you go to Amazon or eBay and type Osco acrylic, you get a whole bunch of different products. These again come in different sizes. This is a set that comes in five um, little drawers, if you like, that are just about the size we need. They're a bit smaller than the original panel, so these are 12.5 centimeters high, 8 centimeters wide. But um, but it's just a very nice form factor for a small panel. It's a complete box, so we don't need to mess about with putting on. But you know, when we used the flat acrylics, we needed to put edges on using bits of wood or something. And these are just, you know, beautifully smooth, uh, and they're going to be fantastic. Now, the size, and, that, and of course, you get five of these. These were eight ninety nine, probably about the same price on eBay or Amazon. And you get five of them, so you can make five panels. In fact, you get five of them plus the box, which means you get. You can have a, an extra panel or panels. You know, you could cut this box up into two or three or four extra pieces. So, so great value. Uh, in terms of the now, it's got to fill a hole. The, 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 the downside of it being a different size, being slightly smaller, is that than the existing panel, it's not going to fill the hole. But <laughs> just taking two of these, the numbers work out great if I take one of these have that as the main panel and then I'm not sure if I can show you this on the video because I have to cut the second one but we can just add the second one on the side like that and then we can we get something that's almost exactly 10 centimeters wide still a bit shorter but that's okay because the altitude alerter that I've just built can go on top of it and of course that side strip can give me space to put some auxiliary lights and indicators on. So that's going to work out fantastic, that's the way I'm going to do it. And indeed I've jumped ahead and as before I've created the inserts that we're going to need. So we've got, if I show you the, 
So that's the template first. I'm going to use this to drill the holes in the in the acrylic box. So I'll cut that out shortly. We've got the the main graphic, which will print out and carefully cut, and that will be what you see when the instrument's built. And all those square or rectangular grey areas are cutouts. And behind the cutouts we have a transparency with all the captions on. These are all the illuminated captions and of course each of those has an LED mounted behind it. So that's where we're at. Just got to go and uh, I think drill the box next and we'll be back. So we've got a panel built now. This is the new autopilot panel. This is how it's going to look. You can see we've got this extra enunciator panel down the side. Got a few things on there. So it's just a panel at the moment with the switches mounted. Nothing's wired up yet. No LEDs. The next thing to do is to figure out what LEDs I need to put in there. The mounting is going to be a little bit tricky. You've got two holes on the side. Hopefully we're going to be able to mount it um, onto the side of an existing panel. The only worry there is whether it's going to be secure enough. I'm, I'm just slightly worried whether it's going to be rigid enough from that single mounting point when we're pressing the buttons, particularly these two outside buttons. May need some support from this side, we'll have to see about that. There's two particular differences I need to work on for the LEDs. One is the brightness, the relative brightness you, you may recall was different across the, the different colours of LEDs in the altitude alerter panel. Now that's partly because I wasn't calculating the resistors properly. I was using the same resistor value for each one and that's not right. The different colours have got different nominal voltages so really we need to be using different resistor values. And that's if we want to get the nominal brightness. I'm not going to go into this in great detail but it's safe to use the 1K resistor which is what I have been doing for everything. And even with the 1K resistors some of the LEDs were too bright so we can use higher resistance values to reduce the brightness. That's probably what I'll do. Only the yellow ones were slightly on the dim side. Now the proper way of course is to calculate the resistors correctly and you know the way to do that we've got a 5 volt circuit the LEDs all draw 20 milliamps nominally and they have different rated voltages which are around 3 volts but they vary between like 2 point I can't remember now, but two and a half to three and a half volts. And so what we need to do is we need to calculate a resistor that's going to drop between roughly two and two and a half volts across it. And you know you can do that methodically using Ohm's law, R equals V over I. But in general terms, you know, we can use high value resistors without doing any calculations. And so basically we're just aiming to get the LEDs all similar apparent brightness. The next thing I need to do is think about how to stop that bleed across from because these have got many indicators here they're all close together we don't want that scatter or that bleed across so I have to think of some sort of partitioning to contain the LEDs I mean what would be a good idea is this is an LED wired up this is a three millimeter one actually but I'm using the five millimeter LEDs I mean something getting like a drinking straw or something like that just lengths of drinking straw or, or heat shrink tubing. But you know if you imagine if you've got a drinking straw or I mean a pen top, actually pen tops cut down that would work well and you've got the LED housed, well, I'm doing it backwards here but within that sort of tube that's going to give you kind of a spotlight effect. Uh, I might do that actually if I just, even if I were to buy a bunch of pens and just throw everything away and use the tops <laughs> or, or take the barrel of a pen and cut that into lengths, that might work as well. So something to just direct the, the LEDs a little bit more in a little bit more of a controlled fashion. I think that's better than putting in, you know, some well I suppose I could put in some sort of cardboard lattice. That wouldn't be so hard to do actually. I'll look at both of those anyway, but that's that's what's coming up next. Okay, so we ended up using a combination of those ideas for mounting the LEDs. I haven't actually done the mounting yet but uh, you can see if I show you the back of the panel we've used this, we have used the matrix partitioning 
option by and large. Uh, I used that because I found some of this foam board that I had around. This is just, well, it's some sort of polystyrene foam with plastic coating. It's very easy to cut, it's actually very rigid and you can cut it into small intersecting parts. So, that, so I did that and I think that's going to be pretty much ideal to prevent the light spilling across. Now I've also tried the drinking straw method and that is flipping brilliant. I've got some drinking straws, these are plastic straws from the co-op and not only does the 3mm LED fit comfortably down the wire um, particularly with the shrink wrapped soldered uh, tags that, that's nice and you know it'll, it'll stay where you put it but more importantly the 5mm LEDs that I'm intending to use are an absolute perfect snug fit uh, I guess the straw's diameter is 5mm <laughs> so, so that fits absolutely perfectly and it's going to allow me to constrain the light beam coming out from the LED. I think, I haven't tried that yet, but I'm very optimistic that's going to work. That's going to be particularly useful. One of the features I've put on the auxiliary enunciator panel here is the beta range left and right signal or light and that's those are very very small lights and in fact what I'm going, intending to do is take the drinking straw with a LED and, and stick it almost right against the L or the R we've got L and R for left and right and um, hopefully that's going to give us a nice effect so we still haven't done any of the wiring up of the LEDs but we should be just about ready to do that. Still got to think about the mounting of the whole panel. Probably need to do that before I fix in these interior partitions actually. Uh, so we'll see, we're getting there.